right, welcome to another episode of the Ramon Foster Show. I'm your host, Eddie Provident. With me is the man himself, Ramon Foster. Happy Tuesday, man. How's it going today, buddy? Taco Tuesday, man. Taco What's going Tuesday. On, Taco <laughs> Tuesday. Hey, man. This show is always brought to you by the Gecko Cafe and Market, where they serve up hot, fresh food 24-7. Uh, maybe we can get some tacos from... Uh, from from the get-go man <laughs> nothing nothing better than taco <laughs> i'll be honest that's probably one of my biggest mainstays when it comes down to eating like i think i'm getting less carbs with the with the flour i try to get the low carb <laughs> tortilla okay right, tortilla right. i i do that and i'm like man bread i gotta stop consuming so much bread and stuff so i do a tortilla every once in a while well a lot of the time if you're making a burger listen to me you gotta wrap can I wrap this? That's me. I'm that guy that want to wrap every sandwich, okay? that I'm that guy. I will admit that. See, for me, the taco, it's all about the guac for me. If, it, if the guac, yeah, dude, I, I'm I'm a sucker for good guac. <laughs> Moan, was that camp today? Yep. Uh, two, well, Monday, I was at camp. And uh, got to talk about the offensive line because yesterday we talked about them on the show and how yeah. they have a lot to prove this year. Um Kevin Dotson went down with an injury. It doesn't sound like it's going to be too serious, at least from what Tomlin's saying now. Uh, don't know everything yet. But this lineup yeah. really started moving the ball, especially in the run game. Funny, exactly what we talked about yesterday. Yeah. We had Dan Moore, Kendrick Green, Mason Cole, James Daniels, and Chooks. Wow. That was the five. And I'll tell you what, Moan, those five together looked they look good, man. I I got to take back what I said yesterday. They look good. It was one practice. It was at the Memorial Stadium, the high school yeah, stadium. Yeah. I, I mean, what's the chemistry? Like, like, how do you build that chemistry? Like, why Why is it that just certain groups of guys gel so well? Well, this is the thing. So we, we know this. Ken, uh, not Kendrick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kendrick Green is, is a kid. High energy. Probably hmm. just wasn't ready for center. Like, that, that can happen, too. I was a college tackle. I went to guard. That's that's finding where you're going to be matched up at is a huge it's a huge transition, man. It's something that can save your career or push you out of the league. And <laughs> him being in a position, I say him playing guard probably is a little less stress and snapping the ball and going to the next level. He can be more of an athlete because that's one of the things we've heard about him, too. Right. As a kid, is a heck of an athlete and the spirit of competition. We brought this up. Coach T has a way of putting guys in these positions. When you get that opportunity, you take advantage of it. I know. So you're saying they bounced back. They had a mm. day that that was necessary. I'll say this: two things from that. One, uh, in the meetings, I'm more than sure they discussed. We can't allow this to happen on the defensive side of the ball. We got to do this. So it's going to be interesting to see what the follow up is going to be behind that. But aside from that, though, Eddie, uh, before you get your point, I was in that situation. Now right. I'll I'll let you go and and I'll uh, I'll explain how it kind of went for me a little bit as far as being the young guy being you know thrown into the fire and mm -hmm. jump starting the jump starting the group man yeah it I mean for me seeing those guys today and and again Najee didn't practice again today still dealing with that foot injury I believe yeah um, but Benny Snell had some holes and he hit them hard uh, yeah. you know J Jalen uh, Warren had some holes, hit him hard. Yeah. Uh, Anthony McFarlane, man, I, I said this last year about him. He is so fast, Moan. Like, he he has that step. If this if that. this dude could stay healthy, if he could yep. just stay healthy, he looked good today. I, but here's here was the common denominator. The running backs looked good, and generally, when the yeah. running backs, all of them as a group, look good, it's because the guys in front of them are moving people and the guys in front of them are busting holes open. And yeah. that's what we saw today at practice for the most part was the offensive line getting the job done. And uh, that, uh, you know, that should really excite Steeler fans. It should. And, and and this is the beauty of it, too. The coaches have to be sitting, the offensive coaches have to be sitting back and say, we got something. Mm. You know, I, I, I know injuries happen and you hate it for certain guys like Dotson going down. Like, you don't want it to be that. But when a guy like, Kendrick gets that opportunity or a guy like myself been in that position that mm. you get that opportunity. There's no looking back. I, I, my, my motto and my kids will tell you this. If, if it's a game between me and you, I'm going to step on your neck to get what I want. We can be <laughs> cool afterwards, but this is Kendrick's opportunity, right? Especially the rookie year that he had my second year in the league. I finished 2009 with four stars. I said, Whoa, I got it. Let's go. I'm going into the next season with a whole lot of optimism made the team didn't actually win the starting job. So that to me was 
All right, well, whatever. It was a three-way competition between me, Trey Essick, and Doug Ligurski at the time. Fine, whatever. I didn't win. I was inactive and everything. I started week three against Tampa Bay. I remember that because I pulled on a play and did not knock down Rondé Barber on it. And I think he ended up chasing down Rashard Mendehall or something like that. And I got called out by Coach Steele. like, God, this will never happen again. He was only that way because he coached him before. So he had to make right. sure that I got him and cleaned him up. The guy's a hell of a player. Let's just throw that out there. Um, but something happened again. We had a huge rushing game that, that week. We we won big down in Tampa. And I was inactive, I think, again the next weekend. Somebody else got injured, and I was in. And it was a culmination of a couple of things. One, when I came in, there was a burst. There was some excitement. There was Pounce and I being the two young guys in there moving and, and just being on the same page and ambitious as heck about that too so there's value in that eddie there's value in watching guys play a different type of game when a new person come in that's what camp is is finding the right pieces that you're going to have to get those guys to mess right and the rest is history behind my career in pittsburgh and honestly if if kendrick wanted to be this way i'm sorry kevin Mm. kd i'm sorry yeah man but Uh, your injury Tom would always says the best availability or the best ability is availability. And it so is. far he hasn't had that. Uh, my question for you about Kendrick Green, though, going back to that, um, because you brought up a good point, you know, kind of comparing him to, to your situation. Yeah. Do you think that last year's situation with him at center actually may work in his favor? Because there's probably not oh going to be as much pressure on him this year to perform uh, not being the center. So maybe that kind of like just lets him, you know, get back to what he's comfortable. Yeah. I, I, do you think that there's something to that? I, I think it is. And this is for a lot of reasons to well, for a few reasons. I won't say a lot for a few reasons is, you know, the fact that he understand what the center needs. Like that was the biggest thing for me going from tackle to guard. I knew what the guard needed on slip blocks, on combo blocks, on mm. pass protections. Like I knew that because I played tackle and I learned the position. Him learning center last year can do a lot for him just because it made him understand the offense. Now, instead of the quarterback just being the, the, the captain of the offense, pointing out who got who, you can have Mason Cole and you can have Kendrick Green. Like the, the mindset of having three guys on the field yeah. that can point and say, we got this guy, this guy, and that guy. Like the checks, like Kendrick learned that last year. He understands what the offense is, what the points are, who we're going to, and how we're going to run this offense. That is a huge plus for him. Like th- that's that's one thing that we kind of say as, as you know, young guys in the league, the more you can do, the longer you can stay around. Mm. That means a lot. Yeah. He plays center. And to go to guard, not having to have his hand on the ball and having a natural guy like Mason Cole play the position – Listen to yep. me. Hear me out. Yeah. I know he had a little bit of an iffy year last year, but having less stress, and I'll be honest, me playing tackle was stressful as heck. Okay. <laughs> it's a different beast out there. I'm yeah. a little bit better on the inside. And for a guy like him to be in that position, dog, to to just say, I can just play ball. Let me know. Like, I know I can give a little extra on the nose guard right here. I know that, look, I got help from the center if he's coming my way. He didn't necessarily have all that last year. He was scattered-minded as far as what the offense is. That second year for me is kind of when the offense slowed down, a little bit midway through camp because I understood what camp was. I understood what the requirements was to be a pro, too. And that's one thing we've heard about Kendrick Green this entire – he's worked. Yes, he has. He's gotten it together. And and, and we can, again – Kevin, get back. Get yeah. back into this competition. I, I want to see him healthy because I want to yeah. see that battle because I, I think Ken, uh, Kevin Dotson at his at his healthiest, he he can be a starting guard in this league, and I want to see those two battle that out. It, it, it's the part that you just said, though, man, to staying healthy. I'll yeah. be honest. You know, I'm always saying I'll be honest, but the reality of it is, is to stay in the league an entire time for a long time you got to kind of avoid that injury bug yeah. or be dynamic enough to where they'll wait on you. That's the secret, Eddie. Perform well, miss the injury bug, or be Troy Palomalu, okay? <laughs> where it just don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no in between. That's it. <laughs> uh, hey, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll get into some more football talk. All right, welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Ramon, we talked about it in the first segment. The offensive line got the defensive line today. There's no way around that. Uh, There was really only one guy that stuck out on the defensive line, and it was actually the rookie, DeMarvin Leal. He he actually looked pretty good today. Um, But here's my question to you. 
we know what's coming and you, you alluded to it in the first segment. We know what's coming for this defensive line and it, it moan. It even started. I forgot to tell you this in the break, but that's fine. I, it even started today at the end of practice when they were finishing up in the, uh, you know, in the position, uh, you know, position on position drills. Yeah. Tomlin was coming at the defenders, man, the, the edge it. rushers, the, the defensive line, he was coming at them hard. So what is, what's this 24 hour period like Ooh. leading up to tomorrow's practice when you get your butt whooped in practice like that? Let me just say this in my older days, I was hoping I had the day off because I knew it was going to be <laughs> hell. <laughs> me and House both. <laughs> like you said, Coach T already feeding them gunpowder. Uh-huh, like, uh-huh. It's camp, man. There's a lot it, of language I can't use on this show, Mo. <laughs> this is a family network, okay? <laughs> Look, it's gunpowder. That's what it is, man. Like, as, as a young guy, though, I was, all right, this is what I would say. Hey, let's go. Y'all know what they're going to do tomorrow. Like, almost in any setting, from high school to college to the pros. Hey. Y'all know what tomorrow is. We got them today, but we better make sure we bring it again tomorrow. It's I, I prom- it's fights. Say what you want. It's going to be the extra pushing. It's going to be the tapping of the hip of the quarterback if they get close. It's going to be even Miles Jack. Okay, Devin Bush. Okay, a little Minka action in there. A little mm. shoulder check every once in a while. That's going to be the vibes. We're getting to what the camp is about right now. You know what I'm saying? Like right. when that page actually turned and I'll say this too, the offensive line getting the dub right now is probably about normal because it does take a little bit more time for the OL and the offense to kind of get on the same page because it's mm-hmm. so many different moving parts. What I always say, defense is controlled chaos. That's just what they are. It's controlled chaos. They can go and be in the wrong gap and still make a play. We can't do that. And, and, and that's where the separator of building the team kind of comes into. So this team offensively, getting a day to where you say it's obvious that they took a step, the defense ain't going to go for that. Coach Carl Dunbar will not have that two days in a row. No, I know sir. Coach Dunbar. He's right with a, with, a, with, a, with a laser and a film clicker, breaking down everything that they need to be working on tomorrow. Moan, the, the crazy thing about what you're saying is, like, you, you talked about Minka getting involved and, like, the other position guys getting yeah. involved. It, it really is like that. If you happen to be at Memorial Stadium on Monday, yeah. uh, you could hear, like, Cam Sutton was, you know, I was in the corner of the end zone. Cam Sutton was by the field goal post. And, you know, he wasn't playing. He didn't have his helmet on. But every time something happened, he was yelling at the offense. Yeah. He was trying yeah. to spark something. He was trying to get something going. You know, right, dude, even the retired guys, Ryan Clark was on the side line trying to get something going man yeah. I, and you know you know you talked about the coaches not standing for it you know who else isn't going to stand for something like that who's that cam hayward hey you think it, cam hayward's going to let them get their butts whooped twice in a row it's going to be hell to pay tomorrow in a good way in a yeah. good way though yeah and it's, it's funny you bring up ryan clark being there because they took they they take pride still in it okay and they still do man when you have the legend himself joe green mr joe green mm. get pissed about the minnesota game like they take pride in what that defense is like. And oh my God, the beauty years, Eddie. Let me explain this to you. When we were just really kicking there, you know what? Yeah, yeah. And there was nothing they could do. Like those boys hated it. Like <laughs> I'm talking about the retire. They hated it with a passion. They, they, and there was nothing. Listen to me. This is the beauty of you telling me this offensive line had a day. It's because if they can stack that three out of the five days they're practicing, two out of the five days, even you give me, I get you, you give me, I get you. Like, you got something. And mm. and that's why I'm cautiously like sleep on Pittsburgh if you want to. You know, like I continue to kind of say that a little bit because if 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 they come together, and we just spoke about this, Eddie, like it's five guys trying to figure out who is who. You remember we just had this conversation yesterday, like who's going to be the guy to kind of bring them together. And the fact that a day later we kind of get that answer, mm. not necessarily saying that Kendrick Green is the guy, but there was a boost there. It looked good, man. It looked good. So, so now, like, how? Take me into the locker room, though, because you know, <laughs> I, I know it's got to be hard to leave that all on the field, and that competitive nature, that iron sharpens iron mentality with these guys, like that. That's got to be good for the morale of the team, and the coaches do. Uh, they have yeah. to love when this kind of stuff happens, when everyone's yelling at each other and yeah. kind of jawing back and forth like that. There's got to be something there that's like really that builds that team. Yeah, the the beauty of our team has always been this: it stays on the field. We might have had an incident or two to go a little bit mm. far, but never malicious, never you know just just spiteful about the return action. And I'll say this: those victories kind of stay on the field, just simply because you know what's short lived. You're going to have to do it again the next day. 
Like, and, and that's what I, you know, I always reference, reference my kids or anybody that I coach is you hit a three, do it again. Mm. You block somebody. Good, okay, well, we'll do it again because that's what the sports require a level yeah. of consistency. So you celebrate it, watch me, the offensive line, he's still going to bash him. You should have taken this step. You should have did this on that play because it's so short-lived, Eddie, that the main goal is to actually come together as a team. So to say, yeah, we got you, well, you can get your face smashed in the next day. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's football. That's sports, man. Very humbling. Yeah, Moan, it's it's going to be fun to watch tomorrow. It's going to be exciting to see how this plays out. Yeah. And it, I don't think it could happen at a better time because, it, like we said, it's the first game week, and this is when you want to see this. Yeah. Uh, so, hey, let's take a quick break. When we come back, it's the only segment that matters. Hey, Moan. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. It is everybody's favorite segment, the Hey Moan segment. And we've got a man. I, this is a good one, Moan. I'm excited about this one. Isn't this there? is from the site, uh, a guy by the name of Nate Doer. Um, first of all, he put two comments in there. The first comment was a uh, birthday shout out for his dad, Dan. And I know we're a few days late. We birthday. got this one on the August 1st show. So happy birthday to uh, to Dan Doer. Happy birthday, uh, 70, 70th birthday, man. So oh, it's a big beautiful. one. So happy birthday, Dan. And uh, Nate's question was, uh, hey, Moan. And he, he blows it up, man. Hey, Moan. <laughs> I'm not going to do the DK thing. Uh, yeah. But he says, look, I'm a cop. And a guy that I work with always says, sometimes you're the bug. Sometimes you're the windshield. That is a great mm. analogy. Uh, do you have any moments of being the bug? And then do you have any moments of being the windshield? Thanks for all that you and D- DK do. Love the show. That's a good question, Moan. You, you kind of alluded question. to one with the with the uh, Rondé Barber story. Yeah, uh, that but, was uh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you you got uh, you got any uh, any stories for this one? Yeah, man. Um, I'll, I'll say this: I I usually say sometimes the bear gets you, and sometimes mm. you get the bear. That's my favorite one. Hammer like, and nail is the one I always hear. Hammer and nail is another good one. I love to hear some other ones. Also, if you you guys have drop them, them in the, the comments comment section. Yeah, yeah drop them in the comments section. Those type of analogies. Uh, a few. I've always told you a story about my first day. One of the first days in camp where we were in pass and I just got worked by the vets. Like I was definitely the bug that day. <laughs> I took it. Okay. So much so that Coach T just let he, he let me have it. But later on in camp, I was dishing it out. Uh not specifically, but it's two moments where I was definitely the bug on the windshield. Hello de Nada. It might have been mm. rookie year, maybe second year, but he just listened to me. I was the bug. All right. <laughs> he plowed through me and it was a cheap shot at the end of it, but he got the sack on Ben. He kind of put his fist up underneath his helmet. That's when Ben broke his nose. Oh, remember? Yeah. Yeah. That was your oh, boy on that. No. Oh, and Ben man. played it fine. He was like, look, Moan, it was a dirty shot. You gave up the sack and that's fine. That's a part of it. He I was like, all right, I'm about to get cut, babe. This is it for us. We've had a good career. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. But if you play long enough and, and, and you're humble about the sport, it's, it's going to happen in some type of capacity from somebody. You're going to get got. Everybody Damn. gets got. Okay? Ooh. And and that one right there for sure. And all I can think is just like, God. Uh, I, I do have to say, though, if someone's going to make you the bug, it might as well be. I mean, that, that's a good one. <laughs> you, you can't be – you can't really, like, be ashamed of that one. Hello, Di Nada. Hello, Di Nada is a dude, Eddie. man. He's a dude. <laughs> And it was something I'll never forget. Willie Cologne was in him. He was like, Moan, just hold on for the ride on that one. He's like, I did. I did. I held on. I should have grabbed him and brought him to the ground. Uh, but but uh, one of the times I was the windshield or I got the bear was against Baltimore 2 and home. We were in the uh, color rush. Mm. And the only reason I remember this one so much or, or bring it up is because Munch, Coach Munchak was like, Moan, I don't know if I've ever seen a pool like that. He's like, mm. you should take this picture around with you. When people ask you who you are, sign it and give it to them. Okay, it's uh, Baltimore at home in the color rush, and it was C.J. Mosley. I pulled around. And I know exactly what the, play you're talking about, it too. It was man. the perfect pool, the perfect opening of the gap between Dave and uh, and, and, and uh, Gilbert. I pulled around, and it was me and C.J. Mosley. And I mm. gather one, two, pop. And you see him just get depleted. Le'Veon's behind me. And everybody's like, oh, what the hell? 
felt like it was, we were wound that probably about 10 times in meetings just because it was like, Mo, I ain't. Okay, the first time that that gets played in the meeting room. Uh, We said to it. Yeah, like, (laughs) what was the reaction though? The first time. You knew it kind of, you you knew it was coming up and everybody's right. like much is like get a hold of it. We actually showed that at the beginning of the meeting before the actual film started. <laughs> That's what we were. Much like, all right, y'all have a seat. Y'all have a seat. This is by far one of the best pools I've ever seen in my life, if not the best pool. Like, that's the way he prefaces it. And I'm trying to stay humble. Coming Coming from 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 the HOL. Oh, man. The gold jacket himself, okay? And and then we won the game, too. It might have been the Christmas game, if I'm not mistaken. And, man, he put that on, and I sat back, and I was just, you know, just, all right, whatever. What am I supposed to do in this situation? And I and he just he was like, look at this. Munch is an old school guy. You can listen to him talk about right. look at this, right? Like same foot, same like he was oh, it was Eddie, listen to me. That was a hit. That yeah. was me being the windshield, like shh, take it. Before we go. Oh, was- and by the way, I saw him later Did, uh- when he was with the Jets. Yeah. And he and I pulled again. He was like, not this time. <laughs> <laughs> He knew, like, he knew he it. He knew it. He knew. But like, <laughs> that's what's so cool about the game, though, Eddie. Is oh, we can man. do that type of stuff. Like, hey, you got me. Like, I did Calais Campbell. Like, the, I cut him just to start. I was like, Calais, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I love you, but I got to <laughs> slow you down. You're not about to bull rush me. Oh man. And uh, he saw me. He's like, not this time. And we just kind of butted up and laughed. And so he recognized it right. too, which made it even cooler. You know, what's the wor- in your whole career, high school, college, professional? Yeah. What is the worst? instance of someone being the bug that you've ever seen like what's the biggest oh, hit the worst gosh. the worst one you've ever seen it was in college okay uh former stiller chris scott okay yeah former stiller chris scott uh brandon spikes we were playing in college florida versus tennessee okay and it was on an interception al had one of these two Alejandro had one of these two against cincinnati when it was dirty okay uh but Brandon, like Chris was chasing out, chasing after interception and Brandon Spikes was a big linebacker, almost mm. defensive end, like big linebacker. And Chris is chasing after the ball. And then those Florida teams that Pounce was on and Gilbert was on, Brandon Spikes, Joe Hayden, they were nasty. And on this pick, Chris is running towards the ball. Got to keep your head on the swivel at all times. And he peeled back. And flatline Chris so bad <laughs> that we were just like, oh, like I, I thought, I think he turned a back flip. That's how bad it was. And like it was so bad that Pounds brought it up like the next year when he got drafted to us, like, Brandon Spike cleaned your boy Chris up. I was like, Al's had one of those. I'll be honest with you. I was so, oh my God. I was so conscious about interception knockout shots. Yeah. Because I was like, Mo, don't get don't get knocked don't, out cold. Don't be that guy, man. <laughs> Can you imagine <sighs> just chasing after the ball and somebody just just declete you? Alejandro's had that so bad. It, it was so funny. But Al, when he used to get like we have uh interceptions in practice, he would just take a knee. Just as a joke, like I'm not chasing. Him. <laughs> I'm not chasing the ball. He was just taking oh, me. <laughs> Nobody wants to get cleaned up, no, Eddie. Oh man, no. Well, yeah. this was a good one, man. I had this fun with this one, one. especially this last one. segment. This was a great. This was a great. Hey, bone. It was. Thank uh, you, officer. Thank you for your service. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And again, one more happy birthday. Shout out to Dan. Uh, bone. We'll do it again tomorrow, Wednesday, and uh, we'll see what happens in camp. Let's lock it in, Eddie.